So lesson 19, magnetic fields. <clears throat> so good news is you guys have done this in, I think grade six, I can't remember what grade you've done it, but I don't think that at the beginning it'll be too hard. Um, where, well, this part will be something new. So what the idea here is that um, certain types of materials called ferromagnetic materials uh, include like, so things like iron, nickel, cobalt, and different alloys. Um, what, what, they, what they're trying to do is trying to figure out in this case, like why are things magnetic, right? And the idea is something called uh, domain theory of magnetism. And, the, and, and what you can like kind of think of it as in a very simplistic version, it's a lot more complicated than this, but um, is that you can think about these materials as having these tiny, tiny little, little magnets inside of this material and their domains. And normally what would happen is that these things have a, like a magnetic pole on each end. And normally they're all kind of random in, inside here, right? They would kind of come to an equilibrium that was kind of like randomized every which way. Um, but what can happen if you get something that's like molten? So let's say I took like iron and I melted it, right? So it's a liquid now. Well, what can happen is that these little domains that are in here, these little like tiny little magnets, right? This is at like the atomic scale, right? <clears throat> these things will, um, like if I, once I melt the material, they can move around a lot more easily. So they can like, yeah, move every which way. So let's say now I subject it to a magnetic field. So I like hold a really strong magnet up to it. Well, what'll happen is all of the bar magnets, all those tiny little domains inside the material will all align with the magnetic field that they're in. All right. So yeah, I'll, I'll let you guys read through this one. It's like good, uh, good uh, material to go through. So make sure you do go through that because that is testable stuff as well. But I'm not going to spend my time on it. Um, but yeah, make sure you, you read through it. Okay, magnetic fields. <clears throat> so we talk a lot about fields in physics 30, right? So we've talked about gravitational fields, electric fields, and now we're doing magnetic fields. So magnetic fields um, are always bipolar, which means that there's always going to be a north end and a south end. So if you cut a magnet in half, you're just going to have two magnets now with a north end and a south end, right? But so magnets always have that, um, <clears throat> that quality to them. Um, please, when we get doing this, don't confuse north and south poles of a magnet with positive and negative charges. They are two different things. There's actually, that's why we had an electric force unit and now we're doing a magnetic force unit, right? They're, they're actually two different forces. So, well, actually I shouldn't say that in the end, they, I'm getting ahead of myself. Don't worry about it. But uh, so they are they are uh, like different things uh, for us, right? So we've got a north and a south pole in the magnet, positive and negative charges on electric charges, right? Like those point charges or on you know electron or proton, right? But they are different. So ways that they're different. So this example over here, right? This example over and over here, right? That is my electric charge. That's what we were doing, right? So it was um, <clears throat> radiating outward evenly on it. Of course, those don't work here. One sec. Okay, so yeah, they're radiating outward um, evenly, right? And the closer that those lines are the stronger the field is so as they go out farther and farther they get farther apart there right so that's that's a, a standard electric field like the way it would look that would be for a proton it's radiating outward remember because we define the electric field as where a tiny positive test charge would go so it would go outward right so that's why that was radiating outward magnetic fields and you guys have probably seen this type of thing um <clears throat> in <clears throat> like i said in grade six science or something like that with iron filings so you can actually see that this is the way that the, the, the magnetic field works, where it would always start on the North Pole and then travel around back down to the South Pole. And it would do it like, so on this end, it would go up and around, and then at the top, it would go up and around. And even these ones that are going like seemingly straight up, they would technically go up really far around and then back up here again. And they would end up back on that South Pole if there was no other magnet, right? If there was some other magnet up here, right? Then it would, it would jump onto that one, right? And the, the lines would look different. But that's, that's the idea. And you, what's happening in a magnet as well 
is you can see that these field lines actually extend throughout the middle of the magnet, right? So in the magnet, they're actually, you know, kind of going the other way. On the outside of the magnet, it's always, and remember this, this, this helps you when you're thinking about like direction of magnetic field, is it always goes from north to south. So like write that down, you know, like, like make sure that you, you have that memorized, that magnetic field is always start in the north, end on the south, because that's going to be important for this unit. Okay, um, all right, so next, what's gonna happen? We're, we're gonna start talking about what happens when you get a current, let's say in a wire, right? So we get these electrons running through this wire and they're all moving like this way. What, what happens is actually that an electron flowing, right? Like you actually get a charge moving or a charge accelerating, I should say. <clears throat> um, What's gonna happen there is that you end up getting an induced magnetic field. And we're gonna start looking at what that magnetic field actually looks like. So we're gonna talk about these like hand rules and you guys are gonna be like, you know, trying to figure out with your hands which way the magnetic field's going, which way the, the current is going and everything else, right? The idea here though, like what, what it says here, um, oh, sorry, this one. Students, uh, the students mess up the hand rules sometimes and kind of lose track of the idea is that the main concept here is that whenever you get current carrying wires or moving charges in general, they produce magnetic fields around them. And that's the main idea there. And the hand rules are just to figure out like which direction those magnetic fields would be or which way the current is going and everything else. Right. But here I'll, I'll show I'll explain what I mean. So we're going to go through three different hand rules in total here. So first hand rule. So the first hand rule is for current carrying wires. So here's the idea. Well, first off, there's, I, I want to get this out of the way first. So there's two terms that are going to come up and that's going to be current or conventional uh, current, which is different than electron current or electron flow. So just let me explain because this will be important what I mean by that. So if I had a battery, let's say, right? So I got a battery like this. This is positive side. This is the negative side of it. And let's say I went this way and then I had like a light bulb that came around, right? Well, what, uh, what we know now, like from the last unit especially, is that what's the thing that moves? Is it protons or is it electrons? Well, we know that it's actually the electrons that move, right? We, we did that with the electrostatics in the last unit. Is that the, the negative thing is the one that's actually moving this way, right? So this would move around and like go this way, right? And what that would be, would be electron current or electron flow, right? That, that's, so it's saying if, if you had this picture and they said what direction is the electron flow, you would say counterclockwise, like the picture right is true, right? But here's the other situation, is if they said what's the current or what's the conventional current? And the reason for this is because at the time when, when people were looking at like, you know, what direction is the current going? It actually wasn't apparent which way it was going, right? It, it, it actually could have been going this way, right? It could have been the positive things moving. And actually it's, it's kind of strange, but like once you, once you start getting into a bit more of like the modern physics of it, it actually doesn't matter. You can think of, you actually can think of the proton as being the one moving and all the math works out just fine. Even though physically it's the electron moving, it actually works with, with everything else to, to kind of like picture the, uh, the uh, proton is being the one moving. It's actually like holes that are moving if you, when you guys get into more advanced, uh, more advanced physics. But either way, you guys need to be on high alert when you guys are doing questions for these words, right? When they say current, that, that would be clockwise in this direction, right? It's, it's like the positive thing moving. And if it said electron current or electron flow, then it would be counterclockwise in that picture. So just be very careful because that's like a big place where people make mistakes, okay? All right, next one. So the first hand rule is going to be really this picture down here. So here's the idea. These are really good pictures. So um, this one is electron current. Okay, so electron current, that means it's the positive thing that's flowing. So for our first hand rule, um, what it's gonna be is that we are gonna use our left hand or electron current. So if we were saying the electron is the thing moving, then we'd be using our left hand, right? That looks like my right hand, doesn't it? Sorry. 
<laughs> Everything's mirrored right now, so this might be a little confusing. Ooh, I should, Eric, you know what? I think I'm really gonna have to flip that around. That's gonna mess you guys up. Um, Cause it, like my whole, my whole screen is, is reversed here. One sec, I think I can change that. Settings, mirror, there we go. Okay, there. All right, so yeah, that looks like my left hand to you guys, right? Yeah, okay, so that's my, that's my left hand, right? So that I'd be using that one for electron flow and I'd be using this hand for uh, current or like, you know, uh, yeah, conventional current, right? <clears throat> okay, so they've told us that it's electron current, like in this picture. So I'm using my right hand in that picture, okay? And the way this works is that we point our thumb, we point our thumb in the direction of the current, right? So if it tells me the current is going up the wire in that case, I would be pointing my thumb up the wire, okay? And then it's my fingers. You see like my finger is right there, like the, the direction that my fingers are pointing. Well, that's gonna be, um, that's gonna be the direction that the magnetic field is going. So the magnetic field would be going, you know, that way. You can see that it'd be going around the wire in a circle like that. Are you guys, you guys good with that? Things would change, right? If I was using my left hand, can you guys do that right now? Or up with your picture, if you use your left hand, can you see that those arrows would be pointing the other direction? It's a lot easier when you're here in person with me. This is kind of, kind of a spatial thing, but yeah, hopefully that makes sense. Okay. So, um, now there's different ways to look at this. This is kind of a good, like three dimensional picture of it. Right. But we could also have, and this is kind of standard pictures like this. And the way this one is, is that if you see a little dot, right? A little, this is the way I like to think of it. That little dot there is like the head of an arrow coming out of the page at you. You're seeing like the tip of the arrow coming out of you. If let's say the picture was instead of a dot, let's say that it was an X. So if I had like an X like that there, then what I, what I, the way I think about that is that's like the back of the arrow going in. That's like the flight of the arrow or the feathers, right? Going like into the board. Okay. So in this case, right, if you, can you guys do this with me right now too? So with, oh, with um, your, well, right hand, because we're still assuming that this is uh, current or conventional current, right? So right hand. Um, this thing is coming out of the board, right? So out of the board. So this is weird. So this way, my fingers should be wrapping around that way, right? So it'd be wrapping around that way. So make sure you can kind of do these with me as, as we're doing it. This one's very kind of spatial. You guys should be moving your hands a lot right now. Okay. So that's the first hand rule. It tells you the direction of the magnetic field around the wire when the current is moving through it. Okay, so we get typical examples like this where they say a wire is placed under a compass, a need, a compass needle and electrons. So electrons, that's a key word, right? Left hand, that's gonna be my left hand I'm using. That's what that just told me. Are allowed to flow from A to B. So that's telling me which way I wanna point my thumb. I wanna point my thumb down, right? From A to B. And it's shown in the diagram, it says what direction will the compass needle point? Okay, so if you think about it, your fingers, right? So when you're doing this, your fingers should be on top of the wire, right? So if you can imagine your thumbs going down and your fingers will be wrapping around the top of that wire. Well, if, 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 the, if your fingers, right? If your fingers were like this around the top of that wire and your thumb was pointing down, then on top of the wire, right? Then that, then that compass would be pointing, like magnetic field would be going this direction, right? So it'd be pointing to the right. Okay. All right. So next one, same type of thing, right? But they said current. So you, I'll let you guys play around with those. It's a really a uh, discovery thing, like playing around, see if you can make sense of it, but we'll do some more examples. <clears throat> okay. Second hand rule. So second hand rule deals with solenoids. So what sol is a fancy word. It just means like loops of wire, right? Is what a solenoid is. Um, so in this case, what we're going to do is we are going to, here, do I have the hand rule on this one? No. 
So what we're gonna do, like in this case right here, is, all right, we're gonna test my drawing ability here. So they've told us that this one is current, right? So that's what the symbol I just by itself represents. If it would have been an E, that would have been electron flow. Um, but they gave us I. So in this case, we're gonna use our right hand still. It's still gonna be right hand for current. And my fingers, right, my fingers are going to wrap around like that way. Oh, this is terrible. But my fingers are gonna wrap around the top of that thing. What, what that is, you can see like the wire starts here and my fingers are going to wrap up and around like an over the top, right? That's the way my fingers are going like up over top of this thing, right? So if my fingers are wrapping up and over top of this thing, your thumb, your thumb would be pointing in that direction. Okay, so that the, so it'd be something like that over top, right? Your thumb pointing that way. Well, your thumb always points to the north. So what this is telling us is that, so if I have a solenoid or a coil of wires, which really just is an electromagnet, right? That, that is what, like if you wrap wires around like a, around a nail, right? You just made a solenoid, right? So you made an electromagnet. What, the, what happens there is my thumb is pointing to the north and the other side would be the south. Okay, so second hand rule. All right, so let's try some. Well, actually, sorry, we're gonna talk a little bit about it. So yeah, the same type of thing when I make an electromagnet like this, it behaves just like a normal magnet, right? We still start at the north and come down to the south and everything else, right? So, okay. Okay, there's some examples. All right, so just quickly, again, I wanna go through like some of the differences between magnetic, gravitational, and electric fields. It's a big part of Physics 30. So, <clears throat> Gravitational fields, which we talked a lot about. Um, you guys can look through this, but remember gravitational field strength is your AG, that's at 9.81, right? So that's the same for every object on the Earth, right? That are like that's close to the surface of the Earth. Um, the force is different, right? The force is different for every object, which makes sense. There's a, I would rather a feather land on me than an anvil, right? Like, it, like it, it's gonna hurt a lot more, there's a lot more force. And the reason for that is because of the mass. The mass is, what is what's causing there to be a difference there, right? So there's bigger force for, for more massive objects. Okay, things to know. Gravity, always attractive, as far as we know. Might turn out that it's not like a really long distances or very small distances. Maybe though, I don't know. Um, as far as we know, it's always attractive. Massive objects uh, always attract, they never repel, okay? Electric field, oh, sorry. Gravitational fields decrease in strength with increased distance. That's that inverse square law, right? Gravitational fields have a vector nature. Right? So just, yeah, there's a directionality to it, which is always toward the object. <clears throat> electric fields, electric fields can be produced by either positive or negative charged objects. So it's sometimes they, and sometimes they repel, sometimes they attract, right? Depending on our, you know, two, two the same repel, opposite attract rule. Electric fields decrease in strength with increased distance. So it still has that one over one over R squared rule, right? That inverse square law. And electric fields also have a vector nature. All right, so we, that's all the stuff we've done. So magnetic fields, magnetic fields are always bipolar. So that's, that's a new one, right? That's that idea that you can't have a North Pole without a South Pole. It just, it doesn't exist that way. So no, magnets always have that quality. And, and to contrast that, that's different than let's say a positive charge, right? Positive charge can exist by themselves. They don't have to have a negative charge along with it. Magnetic fields do. They always have to have, have, to have uh, a, 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 the opposite pole with it, okay? Similar poles repel, opposite poles attract. You guys have probably done that a lot, right? If you have two north poles of a magnet, they repel. If you line it up with the north and the south, they're gonna attract. Um, magnetic field still of a vector nature, which is still, it just really means still these arrows that we're drawing, right? There still is a directionality to it. Unlike gravitational fields, which, which point towards a mass or electric fields, which originate from the charges, magnetic field lines are always, uh, circular without, uh, beginning and without end. So, yeah, so what, what that means there is let's, let's, if we drew like a positive charge and a negative charge, right? 
Well, the way that worked is we would have had our field lines that started from the positive and ended on the negative, right? That's the little, that's different now with magnetic fields. These ones go with like in a circle. You can imagine these things go around in these loops that just like never stop, right? On either side of this thing, they're going right through the magnet and then around. That's different, right? It's like a different type of thing altogether. So, so this, I, you guys need to know the differences between these different, these different types of fields. Okay. Okay. Practice problems. Okay. Hey, so for this diagram, we have a compass. We're going to figure out which, which way the needle on the compass is going to be pointing. Okay. So, well, we could just kind of draw our field lines here. So I know that they originate from the north and they go to the south. So our field lines would do something like that, wouldn't they? So what that, what that means here is that at this point, right, it's the, the field line is pointing that direction. You can imagine for a second that there was a tiny little magnet that was also right there, right? Well, that tiny little magnet would, would have to have a you know, south pole at that end and a north pole at that end. So our needle on the compass is gonna be pointing in the same direction as the field line. And that's really always gonna be the case. The, the, the needle on the compass would always be pointing in the same direction that, that the field is actually going. <clears throat> okay. So now on this side, you know, we'd have, oh, you know, let me go green again. We'd have it going around and then there, right? That one didn't quite touch, but you'd also have like another one you can imagine going like a, around like this, right? So this compass needle would probably be doing something like that was bad drawing, but like, you know, something like this would be pointing that way, right? That one was pointing that way. And that one would be something like that back towards south. Okay, next one. So I'm looking at this one thinking, all right, so it always goes from north to south on the outside of the magnet, right? On the inside of the magnet, it's going from south to north technically, but we don't have to usually think about that one too much. But on the outside of the magnet, it's always going from north to south, right? So it'd be going that way. And then you'd have these other ones that would loop around, right? That would go that way and that would go that way. Same with up here, they go around and it would go around like that, right? So this, this needle, you know, would do something like, you know, at this point, it'd be pointing down and to the right, you know, probably something like this. You can see that, you know. So, yeah, something like that. Okay. Okay. The force between magnets. Oh, yeah, sorry. The force between these magnets is what this is getting at, would be uh, repulsive, right? Well, you guys write that in there. So, repulsive. Which, yeah, north and south, if I didn't make that clear, right? To op. Oh, sorry, that's not going to be repulsive. This is going to be attractive. What am I talking about? <laughs> sorry, guys. You got north, you got south. Those are opposite, opposite poles. Those things are going to be obviously attractive. Okay. So that'd be attractive. Okay. Uh, the next one here. So we got two north poles directed or at each other now here, right? So what, what you can imagine here is that this north pole, you know, the, the field like leaves the north pole. But then pretty quickly it runs into like the this opposing force from this magnet. So what's gonna do is it's gonna come out and then it's gonna be like repelled back that way, right? And same with with this side. Well, it would come out a little bit a little farther there and then that way. And then same with this one, it would come out and then that way. And then come out and then that way, right? It's like they're repelling each other. You'd have the same thing on the other side where they would, you know, come out and go that way, come out and go that way. Same thing this way, and they're going around like that. So this magnet here, I would say, would do something like you know that, maybe let me up a little bit like that, right, for the direction of that field. And you can imagine the lines I just drew, right? This still makes sense that this thing would come up, and it would come around to the back side, and like there would be a south pole to that magnet, right? <clears throat> okay, and these these ones are repulsive. Okay, so I'll let you guys write that in. All right, cross sections of wires. So let's think about this one. So they've shown us this little symbol, this like E with a negative on it. What that's telling us is that it's an, it's an electron. Okay, so electron, that's telling me I need to use my left hand. Okay, 
So let's use our left hand. I've got a dot coming at me in this one, right? So there's a dot coming out of the board at me. What I'm thinking is that that is the tip of the arrow coming out of the page at me, okay? So that thing is coming out toward me. So my thumb should be pointing back toward my face right now if you guys are doing this at the same time, okay? So my thumb is pointing out. My fingers would then be wrapping around this way, right? A terrible circle, but either way. So I would have these circular field lines going around this thing like this, okay? Okay, so that's that one. We'll, give, well, we'll just leave that for a second. Now let's draw the other one. So now, that, again, I've got my, my left hand, but this time I see there's an X on it. So what that means is that, is that this, this is like an arrow that's pointing into the board, right? It's like I'm, I'm looking at the back of the back of the arrow, okay? So in this case now, um, my thumb should be pointing into the board, okay? So if that's the case, then my fingers should be going the other way. Right? I should be having arrows that go like this. So we'll be going around like that, right? That's the direction that's happening. So, and then you'd have, you know, another one. Well, you technically have an infinite amount of these, but okay. So that still didn't really tell us whether or not um, this thing is going to be, so anyway, th that's the, that's the way it would look, right? So that's fine. But it's asking us now, is the force between the wires attractive or repulsive, right? Are these wires going to be sucked together? Or are they going to be pushed apart? So here's the idea is that I'm going to, I'm going to make two tiny little bar magnets, right? So let's, let's just imagine that you had a little magnet that was sitting right there and another one that was sitting right there from that one. Okay. So if we were at that point, then the direction of the field would be going down in both of those cases, right? So what that would be is that means that there would be a North pole, right? A North pole on this end and a North Pole on this end, and a South Pole on the top, and a South Pole on the top. So if you guys were looking at these ones right now, you could probably see that, okay, these, these two Norths are really close together, and those two Souths are close together. So what would those things do? Those things would push apart, right? So these two things are gonna repel. So these things are gonna repel. Or repulsive. I said repel, you could have said repulsive. Okay. Okay. So the next one's going to be very similar. You can probably guess what's going to happen here. Now they're both going into the board. Okay. So left hand still, cause it's an electron. So this one, your thing, your, your uh, field line should be, you know, something like this. I'm just going to draw one for now. And we'll go, and this one's the same thing, right? They're both going to be clockwise. All right. So now they're actually going opposite directions, right? So if I drew a little, a little magnet on the, on the end of like, you know, right here again. And let's say right here. Well, okay, so this one's going up now. So the top is now north and the bottom south. And for this one, the bottom is north and the top is south. Okay, well, can you guys see that these things are completely opposite, right? The, the signs on those things are opposite or the, the uh, poles of those things are opposite. So what's gonna happen there? They're going to attract. So these things are going to attract. Shouldn't it be going the other way? Uh, nope. For, like, so you're using your left hand? Yeah, because doesn't the dot mean that it's... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. My... <laughs> Thanks, Jason. You saved me there. Yes, thank you. Yeah, so yeah, the dot means it's coming toward you. I had it going into the page, so I made my own mistake there. So yeah, they should exactly be going the other way. So they'd be going that way. We'll get the same thing, right? But yeah, that's you're, you're right. So again, okay, so, so north is on the bottom, south is on the top, and then this one's the opposite, so the north and then south. So then, yeah, those things are attracted. Yeah, yeah, thanks. Okay, last one. Okay, so now second hand rule. So we're dealing with a solenoid. And they didn't ask us on it, but they're, they're wanting to know uh, what side of this thing is uh, north and which side is south, right? Like it's either going to be this is north and this is south or the opposite, right? So what do we know? Well, we know that, we know that they've just given us an, this, the symbol I, and the symbol I is conventional current. That's, that they're, that's them saying that it's actually like the positive, like the protons are the ones moving. 
even though we know they're not, but that, that's the, what, what they're telling us. So what hand are we, are we using? Well, we're using our right hand for conventional current, right? All right, so right hand. And now can you guys see that like it starts, I always kind of look right here, right? Like does this thing go behind it or does it go in front of it? And it goes behind it to begin with. So your fingers, right? Your fingers would actually go in behind it, right? Like your fingers are the thing following the wire this time. And so your, your thumb, right? So here your knuckles would be kind of the top. Right? And your thumb would be like pointing that way. It's like a crazy long thumb. Right? So your thumb is going to be pointing that. Yeah, I'm not a great drawer, guys. Um, your thumb's going to be pointing that direction, right? And these are like my knuckles. Here, I shouldn't have drawn it out. Just draw it like thumb like that, right? So your knuckles are kind of coming over the top, and then there's your thumb. You can just go in that way. Okay. Um, so yeah, anyway, it goes in behind it, and then your thumb's pointing that way, so that would just make this the North Pole and that the South Pole. So try that out. Make sure that you guys have that one figured out, okay? Okay, and then on this one, so it's starting from this side, ending on that side. So can you see that the difference here now, well, we still got, we still got conventional current, but now the wire is actually on top, right? So now my hand is actually going to go up on top of it, right? So my hand is going to be the other way. So if you do that correctly, you should see that your thumb would end up pointing that way to the left with your right hand. So if that's the case, then that would make this the North Pole of the magnet and that the South Pole of the magnet. Okay, that's it guys.